blew away by the wind, revealing the dark material below. Well, if we now move to the serrated area and do a similar dissolve between before and after, which we can do with two television cameras here, we will see, I hope, that the points at the bottom did a slight downward walk. And this serrated form and its motion, a slight downward walk, and this serrated form and its motion is very typical of uh, things which occur in laboratory experiments in blowing sand around. And we shortly are going to dirty up the Royal Institution in yet another way by blowing sand around. But before we do that, let's take a look at a laboratory experiment done under closer to Martian conditions than we will be able to, in which you see at upper left the wind blowing these little strings, and down here an originally um, regular pile of sand which has been made to uh, take a serrated shape very much like that on Mars. <coughs> now here, and I have no idea how this experiment is going to turn out, we have a pile of sand on a dark surface, a wind machine, and uh, we're going to turn it on and see what happens. So far, nothing is moving at all. Now we have streams of sand which are blowing down. We have, we almost blew one of Mr. Coates' assistants away. We see long streamers which have come out. We have changed the initial configuration of the pile. Had we let this go for some longer period of time, we would have found that there were little outrider uh, streaks like those that we see on Mars. We find, if we look elsewhere on Mars with the Mariner 9 mission, still further signs of windblown dust. Here at left, we see a field of craters, and behind each crater, is a bright streak all pointing in parallel directions. And if we look at right, we see in quite a different place on Mars a field of craters, and behind each crater is a dark streak all pointing in the same direction, although a slightly wider angle for the streaks that are dark than that are light. This looks very much like material at the bottom of a crater blown out by strong winds, all the craters had the dust blown out at the same time, and therefore all the streaks are parallel. Here is a lovely example of such a thing. There is a, this is a place called Mesogea, which means middle of the Earth, but it's actually on Mars. Here is a crater. There's a long, dark plume coming out of it. There's some source of dark material in the crater. But here is a place where the plume has not extended to. And we can see exactly why that has happened. The material blew out of the big crater and then was prevented by the walls or ramparts of this crater from falling behind it. What we see here, this bright feature, is a wind shadow. And such details confirm that we are seeing changes in the configuration of bright and dark features on Mars due to wind-blown dust. Now, almost certainly the changes that were seen by ground-based observers are due to weather and not to life. That does not exclude life on Mars. It just means that there was nothing that had been seen from the Earth on Mars that we now can say with any degree of reliability was produced by a Martian biology. Each time we look for something, we are a little disappointed, but each time we find something spectacularly interesting. In this case, here we have a map of the wind directions, which are deduced by these streaks and irregular features. And they give us a weather map of the directions the winds blew at the times of the highest speed winds on Mars. That is of great importance for the meteorologists. And in fact, it turns out that the weather patterns on Mars are quite like 
the weather patterns on Earth. They are comparable planets and have comparable weather. The fact that Mars has the same period of rotation, 24 hours, as the Earth makes that comparison even more striking and bears out again a most important point about planetary exploration. There are certain sciences which are restricted to the Earth, or at least were until recently. Studying the weather was one. Studying climates and climate change was another. Geology and geophysics is a third. And biology, the most important, is the fourth. Each of these sciences has been restricted to the Earth. The people studying these fields could not know to what extent their conclusions are generally true and to what extent they are anecdotal to the Earth. By extending our study to other planets, we are able to broaden the powers and generalities of these sciences and therefore to make them much more relevant back here on Earth. I believe that the entire effort at unmanned planetary exploration is more than justified in terms of cost on this basis alone. Now, I'd like to conclude by just showing you three more pictures found by Mariner 9, because there are many things found by this mission that we do not understand. Here is a photograph in Tharsis, the high plateau which contained the volcanoes. And there are many streaks which are behind craters, but there are some which are not connected with craters. In this region are a set of remarkably straight features, not connected with craters, and we can do a close-up of this region right here. And you can see how this streak, for example, does not begin in the crater. These little ones do not. And the manner of formation of these features is mysterious. But it may be due to what happens when very high-speed winds blow sand about. Because the winds on Mars are much higher than the winds on Earth. Winds on Mars have been estimated at over 200 miles an hour, and in some cases up to 300 miles an hour, in fact approaching the speed of sound on Mars, uh, over 100 meters a second to convert the lower number. That is a wind speed range that we simply don't know about on Earth, and maybe there are strange patterns that occur in that case. Even more mysterious, uh, and this is something I love to show, are these features found by Mariner 9. You can see here are two mountains of pyramidal shape. They are oriented in the same direction. They are each three kilometers across at the base, one kilometer high, lovely sculpted objects. What are they? That is also a rhetorical question because no one knows the answer. If we take the typical geological approach, which is if it looks like something I know about, then that's what it is, I guess we would have to conclude the existence of Martian pharaohs. That, that seems to me a little premature, risky, not the only possible conclusion, although it would certainly be terrifically interesting. Uh, because there is something else which happens on Mars, and that is sand blasting. The sand which is carried by these enormous winds can erode and rub down and carve out mountains which are previously irregular. And therefore, over 10 or 100,000 years, the high-speed winds on Mars might have carved two or more quite irregular mountains into these lovely quasi-pyramidal shapes, which we see in this particular region. Maybe that's not what's the cause, maybe something far more exotic is. We are by no means sure. Mariner 9 has revealed mysteries. It has solved many old problems. It has raised many new problems. To really investigate these problems, we must go even closer to Mars and land on the planet. And that is the objective of Viking. Next lecture.